Hi and welcome back. In our last video we went ahead and learned how to add text and images onto our page. In this video we're going to learn how to create different types of links between pages and resources and other things. Now in our site we've been working on the home page, the index.html page. But we have three other pages here. We have the about page, the contact page, and the services page. And I'm going to go ahead and open those up because we're going to need to be working on these. So I'm going to open About, Services, and Contact. Now, I can switch back and forth between open pages simply by clicking on the tab up here at the top. If I want to close a page, I just click the X to the right of the tab. You'll see I was able to close Contacts there. And let me go ahead and open it back up again. And there I have it. And again, you're going to see these three pages are blank except for, or these three pages are blank. The index page does have some information on it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. And then I'm going to go ahead and paste it onto About. And just replace the heading there. Services. And again, I'm going to replace the services. That way, when we create the links to the page, we can tell where we're going or where we've gone. And then contact us. Now, you're going to notice that index.html does not have an asterisk after its name, but about services and contacts do. And that's because we don't have any unsaved changes on this page, whereas we do have unsaved items on these three. To save your changes, you can either go to File and Save to save just the one page, or you can go to File and hit Save All, and that will save all the pages. Again, I hit Save All, and you'll see the asterisks have disappeared. However, as soon as I click somewhere and type anything at all, the asterisk is going to reappear there. So any changes will be indicated with that asterisk. And I'm just going to go ahead and save this. So again, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to go ahead and create links between these pages, sort of a little mini menu to take us between the home page, the about, the services, and the contact page. And I'm going to go ahead and click at the end of my first paragraph here. And I'm just going to go ahead and type out a list of things. So I'm going to select my unordered list right here. Just click that. And I'm going to go ahead and type home page, about us, services and contact and this is going to be the menu for our little test site here and again I'm going to go ahead and save that now there are multiple different kinds of links that you can create the first two that we're going to learn how to create are internal links and external links internal links link to another web page actually on your website and these are all going to be internal links obviously an external link is a link on your website that links to an external website. Like I could say here, um, um, I could hit enter a couple times and say, um, go to Timothy Web Design. And I could make that a link to my external website. And we'll go ahead and do that in just a moment. Again, I'm going to save my changes as we go here. Now, creating links between pages is very simple to do. You highlight the text that you want to become the link, and then down in your Properties panel here, and actually before we do that, let's look at Code View really quickly here. You can see this is just an unordered list. And to turn these into a link, so you just highlight the text that you want to be the link. You come down here into your Properties panel, and you're going to see the Link option here. If I click the little yellow folder icon to the right of the link box, you'll see I get the select file dialog box up. I'm looking in my sample site, so I'm in my website, and I'm going to go ahead and select index.html. I'm going to do the same thing for the next three items. I'll make a link to the about page, and then I'll make highlight and make a link to the services page and then highlight and make a link to the contact page. And then I'm going to go ahead and save that. 
and let's see how that's working. I'm going to test this by coming up here and previewing it in one of my browsers. I'm going to choose Chrome, but you can select any one that you want. And there are my links. If I click on About Us, it's going to take us to that page. Now, I don't have any return link right here, so I've got to hit the Back button. And I just want to test each one of these to make sure they go to the page that I want them to go to. And you'll see each one of those does, in fact, go to the appropriate page. I'm going to close that and, again, come back into Dreamweaver here. And I want to add this menu onto these other pages here. So I'm just going to go ahead and highlight it and copy it, just like we did with the paragraphs before. I'm going to go to About, and I'm just going to go ahead and paste those links in there. Do the same thing on Services, and finally on Contact. And we'll save all of those pages just by going to File and Save All. I'm going to return to my index page and I'm going to click Preview in Chrome. And again, you could use Internet Explorer, Firefox, whatever browser you want. Now when I click on About Us, I've got this menu. So I can go to any other page like Services or Contact or back to my home page. So very easy to create internal links in your site. Now an external link is, again, very simple. If I go ahead and highlight, go to Timothy Web Design here, in the link box I just need to enter in the web address. Clicking the folder icon will just bring up items that are in your internal site. So what we need to do is we need to actually type the address in here. So I'm going to go ahead and type in HTTP. You can't forget the HTTP colon forward slash forward slash and then the website that I want to go to. Oops, got to spell it right. TimothyWebDesign.com there. And hit enter. And that creates the link. You could have also, if it's a very long link, you could have also gone to your browser, copied it from the browser window, and then just pasted it into this link box by simply right-clicking and selecting paste. But since it was just a simple link that I knew, I just was able to type it in there. But you can, again, copy and paste. Now let's go ahead and go into Chrome again. If I have unsaved changes, which I do, it's going to bring up this warning when I try and preview. I'm going to say, yes, I do want to save the changes. And let's see what happens when I click that link. Sure enough, I go to my website. And I can go back. Now, when it comes to internal links like home page, about us, services, contact, those are going to be pages that you're going to want to open in the same window. But sometimes you may want a link to open in a new tab or in a new window depending on how the client's computer is optimized. For example, if I click on go to Timothy Web Design here, I may want to leave my site open and just have another tab open up with this website in it. So let's see how we can do that. How can we force a new tab or a new page when we click a link? I'm going to go ahead and minimize that. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight Go to Timothy Web Design again. You'll see the link is right here. You're also going to see a property here called Target. Now, when I go into Code View here, you can see the link code. When I go into Design View, if I click the drop-down for Target and select Blank, not New, but Blank, that's going to create a new empty tag or blank tab or a new uh, window and place this page inside of that. So I went ahead and added that Target, and you can see again behind the scenes, it went ahead and added that attribute there, Target equals Blank. I'm going to save this. And again, I'm going to preview it in my browser. And this time, there's the old version of it there. There's a the new. Let me go ahead and close that all together. And then go ahead and preview it in the browser. And there's my link. If I click it this time, it opens a new tab for me, leaving my old page open.
so that target property can be used to open new windows or create new tabs in the existing window. And again, it's the client's computer that determines how new windows are open, whether it's in a new tab or a completely new window. You don't really have any control over that. So I'm going to go ahead and close these out. And I'm here back inside of my site. Now, the next kind of link that I want to show you how to create is a link to a PDF document. So we're going to need to go ahead and you can use any PDF document at all for this. You can go ahead and create one on your computer or download one. Or I'm sure everybody out there has some PDF document that they can work with. And you just need to copy that into your site right here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a PDF and add it to my site here. Okay, I'm back. And again, I just went and copied and pasted a PDF file called JavaScript variables into my folder. And you could, again, however you normally move files around, copy and paste, or drag and drop, you can go ahead and do that. I just needed to grab a PDF document and add it to my um, folder. So I want to create a link that will open this PDF document up when I click on it. Now, one word about files that you may add to your site like PDF documents. Oftentimes the names have capital letters inside of them and spaces or symbols that you can't have in a file name or a web file name. So oftentimes when you copy and paste that over, what you're going to need to do is retype it. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in JavaScript-variables. So no spaces and all lowercase letters. So again, you can rename that by right-clicking on it, edit, and rename. Or you can just click on it uh, twice and just hover over it, and it should bring up a rename box. Now I'm going to go ahead and come on to my page here. And I need to type the text out that people can click on to open that PDF document up. And I'm going to go ahead and say, just type JavaScript variables here. And I always like to type PDF after it so people know what kind of file they're opening up. And then I'm going to highlight that. Again, since this is a file internal to our site, in the link box here, we're just going to click the yellow folder icon. And that brings up the select file dialog box. There's my JavaScript variables PDF. And I'll click OK. And then go to File and Save All. So now when I click that, it should open up my PDF document. I'm going to go into Chrome here. And let's click that. And you can see that PDF document opened up for me for JavaScript variables. So very simple to link to a PDF document. It's actually the exact same process you would use to link to a, um, to a file that's inside of your site. Now the last kind of link that I want to um, create is something called a mail link. A mail link. M-A-I-L. And this will allow you, when you click the link, to open up a new email window to email somebody. And these aren't used too terribly commonly uh, right now, mainly because it won't open up a webmail client like Gmail or Yahoo Mail. But you can create a, a mail link that will open what's called a pop mail window. So if the person happens to be using Outlook or something like that, that will work. But again, there isn't a lot of widespread support for this. But I'm going to go ahead and say, but click here to send me an email. And I'm going to highlight this here. And in the link box, I'm going to go ahead and type in mail to colon. There's no www, no forward slash forward slash, no HTTP, just mail to M A I L T O colon, and then the email address you want to email. So I'll do tbenbo at gmail.com and hit enter there. Save it, and when I preview this in Chrome, if I was to click this link, it would try and open up a Microsoft Outlook window to email tbenbo at gmail.com.
And since I don't use Outlook or something like that, I use webmail clients, this wouldn't work for me. So what you should do, since there are a lot of people out there that use um, webmail clients, is you should always include the actual email address in the text that you form into the link. I'll close that and I can go ahead and uh, click here to send me an email space dash timothy dot benbo whoops at gmail dot com and now if somebody was actually looking at this in a browser they'd be able to just to simply copy and paste that into their webmail client so that's how you create uh, mail links so we've gone ahead and we've created several types of links in this video. We did some internal links that link us to internal pages in our site. We did an external link, a link to a PDF document, and then finally a mail link. In the next video we're going to go ahead and learn how to put a table of information onto a web page. I'll see you in the next video.